Hello there guys, today I want to talk about the health benefits of vitamin C. Vitamin C is also found in its uh, inactive form known as ascorbic acid. And ascorbic acid is what most people have been taking as supplements in terms of vitamin C. Uh, the active form is ascorbic. So if you're taking a, a vitamin C supplement known as ascorbic acid, you're taking the inactive form, which means that you're not having... Uh, adequate absorption of it so you have to take it in its in active in its active form known as ascorbate so i want to talk about the health benefits of vitamin c so before i get into the health benefits of vitamin c i want to talk about the sources of vitamin c so one of the sources that i said of vitamin c just as like i said was through supplementation which is not the best unless you're getting the active form which is the ascorbate the other, the other way of getting vitamin C is by consuming plenty of vegetables. And vegetables that are rich in vitamin C include cabbage. The other, the other one is soy crat. Soy crat is a fermented cabbage, which has actually the highest amounts of vitamin C. The other source of vitamin C is from capsicum, or what we call in Swahili, pili pili hoho. The other one is um, pepper or pilipili in Swahili. The other source of vitamin C are, uh, include mostly vegetables. But the ones that I've talked about, bef talked about before, the bell peppers or the capsicum, cabbage, fermented cabbage, and also the peppers, they actually have the highest source of vitamin C. In terms of fruits, the fruits that have actually high sources of vitamin C include guavas. Guavas actually are the fruit at one type of fruits that have the highest highest sources of vitamin c the other type of fruits include the strawberries the plums but if you want to get vitamin c from fruits themselves i would advise you to go for the unripened fruits not the fully ripe fruits why is that because vitamin c has the same chemical formula as uh, sugar itself so if the fruit you are taking has high levels of sugar that means for example like pineapples they have a good amount of vitamin c but because when the pineapples are ripe they have a higher sugar content it means the amount of vitamin c you are absorbing is very low because the sugar and vitamin c will compete to get absorbed by the body and the body will always favor sugar over vitamin c so you might be taking your pineapples and saying i'm getting a lot of vitamin c but actually you are getting very, very low. So that would be one cause of why you are taking a lot of fruits and then you are end up having low vitamin C levels. Also fruits are like, for example, a fruit like an orange. Instead of going for the yellow type, it would be better to go for the green type because definitely the green type has lower sugar levels and more vitamin C. And citrus fruits are another type of fruits that have high vitamin C levels. But if you want to get your vitamin C from fruits, go for the unripened fruits or fruits that have very low amounts of sugar. All right. The, so those are the primarily two sources of, of uh, the three sources of vitamin C. That is supplementation. However, if you're going for supplementation, get the active form, which is very hard to get because the one that is in the market is the inactive form, ascorbic acid. The other one is now taking it directly from vegetables and if you have to take it from vegetables remember vitamin c is a water soluble vitamin so whenever you're cooking your vegetables if you're cooking it with a lot of soup and then you do not and you don't you end up not taking the soup it means this you are taking very very little vitamin c from those vegetables because you have poured the soup that has the vitamin c so you have to steam your vegetables or and don't and if you have to make soup from them, it's not advisable, but you also have to drink the soup if you want to make the soup actually from them. And if you have to maximize your intake of vitamin C from vegetables, another way could be blending it or fermenting. You, you ferment the vegetables. For example, like cabbage, you decide to ferment your cabbage. And fermented cabbage is, called, is what we call sucrat. And when it's fermented, you're increasing the bioavailability of vitamin C. All right? Then the other one is fruits, but if you want to take vitamin C from fruits, ensure you are taking unripened fruits. So instead of taking a very ripe mango, 
go for the less 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 ripened mango others you are taking the very ripened mango you are cheating yourself that you are taking vitamin c you are just taking sugar so the next part which are the sources of vitamin c okay which are the health benefits of vitamin c one important health benefit of vitamin c is that it is an antioxidant so what is an antioxidant an antioxidant is a is a, a or let me say it's a substance that prevents oxidation taking place in the body so oxidation is what causes inflammation whenever it happens oxidation it means you are adding more oxygen molecules to something that's not supposed to have it for example when you have oxidation happening in the body is when we can have cancer happening also when you have oxidation happening uh, around a uh, iron let's say when you are taking huge amounts of iron especially those who are taking iron supplementation whenever you have oxidation taking place and there is iron in the body which is free iron it's not iron that has been bound it is free iron because you took it you took it in form of a supplement it means that you're going to there's a higher chance of oxidation you know iron when you expose it to oxygen what happens it trust so imagine uh, oxidation taking the place in in the presence of free iron in the body that can lead to cancer occurring in the body so that's why you're supposed to be careful whenever you're taking iron supplementation because that's one risk factor oxidation then uh, that's what I was talking about oxidation so vitamin C being an antioxidant itself it pre- it's, it's a it's a way of preventing certain diseases occurring in our body like cancers also it strengthens our immune system because it is an antioxidant and also it prevents the free radicals inside the body especially because we are taking a lot of chemical foods right now we are taking a lot of chemical foods in terms of preservatives in terms of food colors in terms of um the fat the production of food in terms of you are having a lot of herbicides and pesticides used, used in food production and fertilizers so we are taking a lot of uh, free radicals that could get into our own bodies and these free radicals can cause diseases like cancer so vitamin c being an antioxidant it prevents these free radicals getting oxidized and them causing inflammation in the body the second benefit of vitamin c is that it is uh, it helps in a uh, it forms part of the white blood cells so the white blood cells are populated with vitamin c so the uh, one reason why people are taking a lot of vitamin c supplements during covid remember white blood cells are part of the immune system infrastructure so v- vitamin c being part of the component of white blood cells it means that it boosts the immune function and that's why a lot of people are taking vitamin C supplements during covid however okay or not however what i mean is that because it's a part of the white blood cells you are having better immune system function the other benefit of vitamin C is that it helps in formation of collagen and when i'm talking of collagen i'm also talking about the connective tissues the tendons your joints so when one thing whenever you're having pain in your joints whenever you're having um you're having these bleeding gums or whatever or you're having this pain in terms of your tissues it means you're having low vitamin c levels so the vitamin c itself it helps in that function formation of the connective tissues and collagen so you'll have better skin health so whenever you're having bad skin health it shows that you are having low vitamin C levels and that's why a lot of skin a lot of skin uh, let me say medications or let me say ointments a lot of skin ointments are focusing on having vitamin C with them for example like Garnier that you have been hearing a lot of adverts about them they are saying it has vitamin C within it so the vitamin C is supposed to help with connective tissue formation which we found in our skin it's found in the gums also you'll find a lot of toothpaste like sensodyne that are emphasizing about tooth sensitivities it's because they're having th- they're saying that it has this vitamin c in them that's supposed to help with that so that vitamin c itself is for connective tissue formation in our gums to prevent the tooth sensitivities the bleeding gums and what have you so and also about that the joint pains 
so those joint pains that you're having could be a signal of low vitamin c levels and uh, vitamin c helps in now formation of those joints so the other function of uh, vitamin c that i want to talk about is that it helps in uh, formation of noradrenaline so noradrenaline is a is an alert hormone for example when i come and uh, give you a shock it's supposed to help you with shock absorbing shock at once maybe you see a lion that is the hormone that will be released for you to be able to deal with shock now the problem is that if you are having low vitamin c levels the noradrenaline will be released in low levels that means you will not always be alert you will always be feeling sleepy you are always feeling tired because your alertness levels has lowered because of low vitamin c levels now what are the symptoms of low vitamin c one symptom of low vitamin c or vitamin c deficiency is scurvy and within scurvy i want to talk about the different signs one is bleeding gums bleeding gums or uh, pain whenever you're brushing your teeth that's a sign that you're having low vitamin c levels meaning that your connective tissues within your gums they are very weak or they are not well integrated meaning that you are end up bleeding so one way of dealing with the bleeding gums or uh, you feeling pain whenever you are brushing teeth or two sensitivities is raising your vitamin C intake levels and one way of raising your vitamin C intake levels is by consuming vegetables and whenever you are consuming vegetables you just steam them so that you can raise your vitamin C levels the other symptom is joint pains joint pains as i've said because vitamin C is involved in formation of collagen and your joints are made up of collagen itself so whenever you're finding you're having these joint pains it could mean that you're having low vitamin c levels due to which is supposed to form collagen the other symptom of low vitamin c levels is tiredness like i've said because you are, the noradrenaline hormone is not produced in adequate amounts meaning that you are not alert and you're not alert it means you're always feeling tired feeling sleepy you're not awake at all times the other symptom of low vita vitamin C deficiency is very quick aging. You are aging very quickly. So vitamin C lowers the skin aging process. So whenever you are having low vitamin C levels, it means that the aging process, it, it hastens very quickly. And the reason why it's hastening very quickly is because of the antioxidant property of vitamin C. So aging could occur quickly because of presence of anti of oxidants in the body oxidizing agents in the body so because of antioxidant property the aging process is slowed down but whenever you have that you're having vitamin c deficiency the aging process it's a bit faster and so you'll always find that people with vitamin c deficiency they are aging very quickly so in short i've already talked about the sources of vitamin c the health benefits of vitamin c and the symptoms of vitamin c deficiency so if you want to boost your vitamin c levels i hope this video could help you now understand it more better so thank you for watching and see you in the next video